Why do lizards drop their tails? That's an easy answer, to escape predators. What I think is more interesting to talk about is how they drop their tails. Let's get into it. Throughout the animal kingdom, there are a variety of methods animals use to avoid becoming food. Some animals have shells, some have claws, and some develop highly advanced weapons capable of wiping out millions of their own species within seconds. Then we have lizards, which can drop their tails. However, there's a little more to it than that. First off, not all lizards can drop their tails. While most can, there are exceptions, such as bearded dragons. To add, it's not just lizards that can do this. Some salamanders, and even the tuatara, which is still not lizard by the way, can do this as well. Second off, the way they do this is not the same for every species. To begin, this defense mechanism is called autotomy, from the Greek auto meaning self, and tome meaning severing. Essentially, self-severing. Autotomy is not just unique to lizards. Any method of dropping body parts for defense is known as autotomy. The tail dropping kind, however, is known as caudal autotomy. It can be broken down into two main categories. Those who only drop their tail when pressure is applied, which is most of them, and lizards that can do this voluntarily. The ability to do it voluntarily is called true autotomy. This is done by contracting a muscle to fracture the vertebrae, thus disconnecting the tail. Certain geckos, such as crested geckos, are well known for being able to do this. Speaking of crested geckos, let's talk about regeneration. Tails are typically very important, which is why lizards have them in the first place. For lizards like monkey tail skanks, they use them in everyday movement. For others, like leopard geckos, they store fat in them to use in case of emergency. So losing a tail is typically not good, which is why many lizards will regenerate their tail after losing it. This varies between species. Some lizards, like gargoyle geckos, will grow them back, but they won't be able to bend as well as they used to. Some will grow them back, but they'll be visibly different, like leopard geckos. Some, however, like the aforementioned crested gecko, will never grow it back. This usually isn't a problem, however, since these species tend to adapt fairly quickly to no longer having a tail. However, dropping a tail is almost always a last-ditch effort. While crested geckos may adapt and live a full life without a tail, that doesn't mean it's entirely safe. Dropping a tail weakens the lizard's immune system, which can lead to problems, even if mobility isn't one. To add, some species' tails are so valuable nutrient-wise that they will actually go out of their way to eat their own severed tail to regain some of its nutrients. Heck, some lizards will even intentionally eat other lizards' tails to steal some of their nutrients. Anyways, nature is terrifying, as always. If you learned something new, feel free to drop a like below. It does help out the channel. Thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.